giving you a voice. Making it loud our own way. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. Kicking off the trait, we have the Ochoa division. So the most notable thing about Ochoa is that it's pretty far from notable this year. Uh, a lot of the really strong teams, or yeah, a lot of the really strong teams were over in Edison. And a little hint, only two of the FTC top 25 teams are in Ochoa. So that'll be really interesting to see. Um, looking at OPRs, something that's interesting to note about the balance or imbalance between divisions is the average OPR is only about 10 points off, which kind of shows one of the strengths and the flaws in random division balancing. So with as many teams as we have, divisions should be pretty darn close to balance just because there's such a big pool. Um, and where we really see that on balance is that top 1% of teams there, those top three or four. And I think that's what we saw here at Detroit. We have the big three, we can all get it pretty far over 25 cycles now. And the top teams over in Ochoa are really peaking a little bit over 20 cycles. So I think that'll make a big difference in event finals. Um, let's see here. Over on the depot side, we have a few double digit depot bots that I know of in practice at least. Um, so I think alliances will probably end up being pretty close to, to competitive with each other. Um, with there being so few really strong robots, it'll be interesting to see if the two really good creator bots would end up picking each other or picking a strong depot bot. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Do you guys have any thoughts on the Ochoa? I'm actually, I, selections? I'm actually surprised um, by how much people think that they're not going to perform as well as they are. Um, I've... We had a scrimmage in Maryland for the Maryland and Virginia teams. And Frogbots, they look like one of the best robots I've ever seen. Um, they are definitely picking up on what they they did a complete rebuild, diagonal slides looking really, really solid. And I think that they have a shot um, with Mechanical Paradox Cubed, who's made some modifications that will definitely put them in a place to they could win. I think that it's not going to be easy for Edison to win, um, but it will be close. Right. Um, another thing I want to add about Ochoa's like ability in the finals is uh, I want to talk about Big Stem. And basically, they've always been like a very obviously like an am amazing looking robot. But like uh, on top of that, they've always been like so fast and versatile. And I think that could really uh, aid them in playing defense or just like affecting like the crater bots just a little bit, just enough to make a deep uh, difference because their design doesn't seem to be really crater reliant or deeper reliant. I mean, I know they are stronger at crater, but I think they'll be able to do both effectively. So I'll say, of course, I'm biased because my team is in the Ochoa division. Same with Ethan's team. Uh, I think Ochoa is going to do actually pretty well. I know that we, there's not a lot of the big names like uh, gluten free. Um, why do I forget? Man bros, uh, 8680. Um, but there are some pretty good teams coming out of like Illinois, for example, Michigan, for example, I'm pretty sure uh, CSPA miners are in Ochoa, correct or yes. no? Yes. I so they were, so. they were, if they're in Ochoa, uh, they were amazing at the, um, uh, Michigan state championship. They killed it there. Uh, coming out of Illinois, we've got 14, 16, 14, 6, 15 turbocharged. They have just been lighting it up recently. They won the recent Illinois scrimmage uh, that where 8680 was there. I mean, they won that by um, uh, tiebreaker points, but uh, they still performed really well there. Uh, they won the um, Peoria, FRC Peoria Regional FTC Robot Rumble. Uh, they're just an amazing team. We've got uh, 10635 Unknown Element coming from Illinois. I know they've been changing their robot up, making some modifications. They were insanely fast at Illinois. I think we could see some really high scores coming out of um, uh, teams from Ochoa, teams from Illinois. So I'm rooting for our division. I think, though, I mean, as we're probably going to get to in a minute when we go to talk about um, uh, Edison, we're going to see that uh, those Edison um, elimination matches are going to be really competitive. Uh, but you never really know what's going to happen when the two divisions come to face off. So, mm -hmm. And uh, Nathan, I just wanted to confirm that uh, CSPA Miners is in is in, uh, Detroit, uh, in Ochoa. Perfect. So, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
that will be interesting. I, I'm interested to see. Traditionally, we haven't really ever seen Michigan teams improve much after Michigan State. Um, so if they just show up with their Michigan State robot, I don't know if I'll be very impressed. But it's possible <laughs> they'll break that trend. And I'm excited mm -hmm. to see how that sh shakes up. So something else that I'd like to talk about is there's a big award difference about championships. And I've always kind of guessed at it, but I was never really sure what it was. So the first hint at my kind of theory is that really they split up alliance or judging by division. And then I was looking back at awards from champs last year. And with the exception of the Connect Award, there were three finalists in both divisions without fail so i think if there is a correlation between judging by division it will be really interesting to see how that shakes up it goes past just last year um it it's been split ever since cascade effect um as far as i know because there haven't been results from block party or before published online but it split exactly three and three for most awards, and then Inspire split two and two. And I don't think that's a coincidence that at every single world championship that's <laughs> happened. So um, either sure. first is rigged, um, or there's definitely going to be some judging differences. Mm -hmm. it, it would make sense with the amount of teams at Champs to just essentially run two mini judging competitions to have panels for each award within their own division and i think that definitely could end up affecting the way especially worlds inspire ends up playing out yeah yeah well i i totally agree and my team and i have talked about this a lot they uh we kind of came out of illinois state with the mentality of uh we didn't win an award there we didn't get a nomination there so let's just abandon our engineering notebook and let's focus on making the best robot we can uh though as we all know uh even if you make the best robot you you can you might not win at all because you have a bad match schedule. Even if you have the best engineering notebook and presentation in the world, you might not win any awards because judging is a crapshoot. And I, and recently, or probably in the last like two weeks, I've really tried to ramp up our engineering notebook again because, back to Ethan's point, kind of judging is a crapshoot at Worlds. Even if you, okay. I, I remember that last year, um, 4695, I might have just said the wrong number. Their name is Animatorius Romani. Uh, here in, from here in Chicago, uh, they were a lottery team to Worlds, and they won an award uh, last year at Detroit. So uh, just kind of looking at that, or they didn't win, sorry, they got an award nomination. Uh, but just looking at that, uh, that just shows that kind of judging is a little bit of a crapshoot. Anyone has a chance to win. Past history doesn't really matter. Yeah, that, sure. it's very true. And I think with the number of teams, it makes it very, very difficult for the judges to make a decision. Um, I know personally for our team, in Velocity Vortex, we got zero pit judges, zero award nominations, and then we come back in Relic Recovery and we win the entire thing. And like, yeah, we were a little bit better, but it's not like we were a completely different team. And so mm -hmm. it's just a little bit um, random. There's always a random factor to both the robot game and the judging. Mm -hmm. So notably, I don't believe there are any inspired noms from last year in Ochoa. So with that, that's about all I have. Nathan, or excuse me, Ishan, would you like to take us over to the Edison division? Yep. Oh, yes. Uh, let's roll for our giveaway. So um, let's see who has won our first servo block of the night. Drum roll, please. And the winner is going to be... All right, the winner for the uh, servo block. And once again, thanks to our friends over at uh, Go Build Up for providing this. And that is going to be uh, Kate329. Kate329, congratulations. Uh, make sure you shoot first updates now, a message here on Twitch or at our Discord so you can claim that prize. Uh, if you are going to be at the Detroit Championship, uh, please let us know as Gobilla may be able to hand deliver it to you there as well. So congratulations once again uh, for the uh, awesome uh, giveaway from uh, Gobilla. And I think we got another one coming up right away. Is that right? Yep, let's, uh, let's start our giveaway for... I think the, I guess we can just do the other servo block. Uh, this is going to be a 24-tooth uh, spline hub shaft servo block, so a little bit different. Uh, and the keyword for that will be, uh, I don't even know, Ethan, throw us a giveaway. Keyword, um, sorry. Let me, let's do paint bucket. Is that one <laughs> word or one two? Word? One word? Uh, let's do one word. So P-A-I-N-T 
U C K E T. Awesome. All right, Most Pete notably bucket. because servo blocks are famously able to support a heat bucket. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, right. sounds like a Jeopardy, like, uh... <laughs> <laughs> this servo right. component is able to support a paint bucket. Fill in the blank. This, yeah. Um, all right, so let's move on to the Edison division. Sean, do you want to take us away with that? Yep, so it's time for some rigged emotes because it's time to talk about the Edison division. Um, <laughs> the only way to describe this division is a bloodbath, um, both on and off the playing field. Um, out of the four years that I've been to FTC, uh, been doing FTC, this has easily been one of the most difficult divisions that I've ever seen. And some of it may be the fact that there's 80 teams, but I think some of it's also that there's some really, really good teams in this division. Um, and while it may be it may seem obvious, some of like the highest scoring teams are in the Edison division, such as Crack and Pinion and Gluten Free. There are also a lot of really, really good teams that are out there to win the championship. Um, before we get into robots on the field, I just wanted to note, off the playing field, all three Inspire winners dash finalists from the Detroit World Championship last year are in this division, including my team, Wizards.exe, um, the team Green Girls from St. Paul, Michigan, and the team The Gear Ticks. Wow. So that just sets us off for getting into the robots. Um, the clear top two teams that people have been looking at for robot performance are Crack and Pinion and Gluten Free. Um, from their last time competing, um, it looks like it would be very, very hard for them to play together because they both require playing on close crater side. And um, if you watch this video from Gluten Free right now, at the end of this video, they're actually gonna have six minerals left inside that pit. And that's not enough for two teams to work together with. So I think that it's going to be very, very difficult for them to both play together, especially if they haven't made any modifications from when they last competed. Um, this could lead to them splitting up during alliance selection, even though they are some of the best teams in the world. And it could lead to a very, very close finals. Um, some of the other teams that I see being captain or a good first pick um, are Team 9971, the Land Bros. Um, team 6931, the Substantial Monocephalic Brainstem Robotics Team, and Team 10091, who set a world record in practice with Crack and Pinion. So I wouldn't be surprised to see any of these five teams um, taking the number one seed, um, since ranking is pretty random in this game. Um, but it's going to be interesting to see how they all pair together and split up. Right. Uh, Ishan, one thing I wanted to add to this is like you were talking about gluten free and crack and pinion, like there's a very low chance of them being together. And I completely agree on this because like, yes, there it's possible that one of them is like the second choice or like they switch off between matches and they don't play at the same time. But the thing is, like with such top teams, I really, really doubt one through four alliance captains are going to let them stay free. Right. Like they're going to try to snatch those teams up immediately if they're not those teams anyways. So, yeah. Yeah, and like, so they could swap in and out because they both have very similar autos. They both have similar capabilities. But that right. means that they're going to be putting a lot of pressure on their second seed, which usually right. isn't as powerful of a robot that can last nine Definitely. matches more Definitely. because it could be a potential of nine more matches that they have right. to play. Um, mm -hmm. So it could be very difficult. That's a, that's a really good point. Yeah, no, you're, you're right, but I... Uh... I definitely think it would be really cool to see them together. <laughs> um, <laughs> I just really want it to happen. I really want to see two full <laughs> cargo holds for one alliance with like a 600 point score up there. Um, <laughs> has anyone done the math? How many points did uh, gluten free score there? Um, I don't remember. It was 30 minerals. So mm -hmm. something in, or 30, Wasn't it like, like 30, uh, 31.5 cycles. Yeah. So 63 minerals. Right, so that would be 315 points plus a 50 cycle, uh, plus a 50 point end game plus like an 85 point auto would be uh, 450 on their own. Holy right. cow! Mm -hmm. And that yeah. doesn't include another uh, robot 50, right. 50 point end game, 80 point auto, auto. which gets you to 580. Holy, that's crazy! Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so and that's if your partner doesn't score anything. So I don't really see them getting together. Um, 
But one of the things that I found interesting in this uh, division is actually how many different types of robots are in the division. And so if Tyler, you could throw that video onto the screen. Um, one of the cool robots that is there that I think is an underdog going into here is Team 10030. And I think that they could really, really pull this division apart because they're able to go into that crater and they're able to get in and out of it very, very quickly. So just by going in and out of it, they're going to be messing with the teams like Gluten Free and Crack and Pinion. And especially if they're playing Depot, they're able to get in and out of that crater really quickly. So they have a very high scoring potential. Plus, they would be disrupting the opponents just by um, just by in taking themselves. So then a couple of other teams. Um, the Knack is another really big team from Iowa, I believe. No, it's not Iowa. It's Wisconsin. Wisconsin um, yeah. yeah. Uh, they've got a really cool partner side crater. Um, they're able to do partner side crater bot. Um, but one of the problems with them is um, they often will drain the pit of your um, own crater. And so, like, again, with Kraken Pinion and Gluten Free, who can both almost drain their own crater, uh, that's going to be a little bit of a problem. Um, a couple of low pivot bots are in our division as well. Um, so team 10435, they've been scoring around 30 minerals with a low pivot arm. Um, my team, team 9794, was Zodiac And also the rookie team, 14, 14320, the Antidote, who had a really, really cool reveal that came out yesterday. Um, these are all low pivot bots that could easily play depot or crater side. And I think that these could be very strong robots that are ending up as a second pick um, throughout the entire day. Um, one of the teams that I don't think has had a lot of hype and not has not had as much hype as they deserve is the Brainstormers from Lexington, Massachusetts. Um, they were world champions last year. Um, they're mm -hmm. definitely battle tested. And yeah, they're almost a completely new team this year um, since a lot of their members have graduated out, but they've built a solid robot. Um, there's a lot of engineering that goes into this robot, and they're they're definitely a top pick. They were the winning alliance at Massachusetts, and I would be surprised if um, they weren't in the running for finals or if they made it into the finals. Um just overall, to recap the entire division as a whole, there's a lot of teams that can claim that they can do between 15 and 25 minerals. And it's really going to come down to performance, how well they're able to drive against defense or deal with defense. And I think in the end, this division, especially if gluten-free and crack and pinion split up, there's going to be a very, very physical final with a lot of robot contact. And it's going to be come down to uh, who can slow down gluten-free or crack and pinion. If I were to make a random guess on who's going to end up with who in the finals, um, I would say Gluten Free is going to go with Landros. They did it last year at Worlds, um, and they know each other well. And then Crack and Finian is going to go with Nyan since they've been practicing a lot. And it's going to be one tough challenge to get to Porn Field. It's going to be yeah. A I'm almost awesome more battle. excited for the semifinals than the actual finals for Ford. <laughs> um. I think one of the teams that we forgot to mention, I'm not sure which division they're in, but they're 12-2-31 uh, Warrior Tech coming out of Indiana. Um, they we have a couple of pretty strong Indiana teams. Uh, Warrior Tech and Pixelated are both yep. over in the Edison division, of course. Edison, so of course, yep. we could see some pretty darn strong second picks or even some first picks out of those teams. I know they've put up some really high scores. In the uh, top six OPR in the world, Warrior Tech has two of the top six, so they're doing uh, pretty well. Uh, Houston, Warrior I think, is going to be... Edison. Uh, Ethan. Yeah. Oh, Edison. Did I say... What did I say? Oh, you I said you weren't sure. Oh, I wasn't so, sure. Oh, Ethan had said it. Yes, Ethan yes. had just said it a moment ago. Um, oh, oh, sorry. That's okay. Yep. Uh, I just think it's going to be really competitive to watch. Um, quickly, before we get into the top 25, if the winners from Houston faced off against the winners from Detroit, which, which world championship would win? Even though we don't know the teams, but it... I would say Detroit. Yeah, Detroit. I'd say I Detroit think, would win. I don't know. <laughs> like, I want to like say Redneck Houston so like, bad, but... I feel like Redneck would, like, if they were part of the winning lines, they would be really able to incapacitate, like, gluten-free or crack and pinion. I don't yeah. know. We'll see We'll see in qualification matches if they go against any mm -hmm. double-angled bots yep. that they decide to do. We sure. will see. We need your help to keep fun loud, live, and independent. 
Help us by visiting our Patreon to pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now. You can also support fun live on Twitch for a few bucks a month or by linking your Prime account for free and clicking subscribe. Thank you to all of our co-executive producers keeping fun loud, live, and independent.